as operators move to a virtualized architecture, they don't want to be investing in one technology or one generation of technology now, and then have to upgrade later. So Affirmed has been very specific that what they invest in today for an LTE network is going to be 5G ready. So a lot of people say, what does that mean, right? And in terms of 5G, there's a few things. First and foremost, you're going to see a lot of applications coming on the scene that are very high bandwidth and have ultra low latency requirements. This requires an architecture of what we call is decomposed. So it has the ability to break apart what is a core network into a centralized control plane and distributed user planes. By distributing the user planes, you can actually move the applications closer to the edge of the network that allows you to have those high bandwidth applications working very well with a very, very low latency. Some of the other capabilities are around the ability to self-monitor functions. So what we call virtual network functions, the ability to have embedded probes that can monitor those, monitor those versus the probes sitting outside the network and monitoring them externally. Some other capabilities you hear a lot about, especially with things like IoT, the ability to network slice. You have one infrastructure and you're being able to create separate slices depending on the application. So you could have one application for connected car, you could have another application for a narrow band IoT application like smart metering. The ability to do those slices is critical. When operators buy into a 5G ready network now, they can take advantage of 5G capabilities on their 4G network. Things like virtual probes, things like network slicing, things like a decomposed architecture, the CUPS architecture, they can take advantage of that now on 4G. We have customers going into deployments that are doing fixed wireless deployments with that decomposed architecture. So they're, they're able to take advantage of advanced capabilities today as the standards evolve. From a standards perspective, a lot of these areas have already been outlined. What we're really waiting for are the interfaces. And those are just extensions of our current architecture. We've had some great announcements this week. One in particular is Digicel. They're a large operator that operate in the Caribbean. With virtualization, they were able to do something that would never have been economically feasible. They have 31 markets, and in the majority of those markets, they're deploying a dedicated virtual EPC. And what that means is for each of those markets, they can tailor the services to that market. So let me give you an example. In Jamaica, your subscribers may have one type of profile, and in Bermuda, they may have another. So in Bermuda, you have a different subscriber profile that might be very high bandwidth users, a large number of devices. That might not be the same case for Jamaica. Now, when you have a dedicated EPC in each of those markets, you can really tailor and customize those services. And from a cost standpoint, it's, it's, it's very economical to actually deploy virtual EPCs in each of those markets. If you were doing that with legacy appliance-based architecture, you could never economically do that. And that's really something that's exciting. You're actually seeing operators being able to do things that were not possible before and now with the virtualized architecture. And what they're excited about is that what they've bought into is a 5G-ready architecture. So capabilities like network slicing, capabilities like supporting high bandwidth applications with low latency, they can actually do those today.